Hello friends, welcome back to Shiji classes and in this video we are going to discuss on carbapenems. The mechanism of action or mechanism of resistance is same as that of penicillin that is they inhibit the bacterial cell wall synthesis. Next antibacterial spectrum. Carbapenems are the broadest spectrum beta lactam antibiotics. They are having high activity against the gram positive and gram negative organisms including pseudomonas. It includes first the drug name is imipenem. It is semi-synthetic beta lactam antibiotic. It is a derivative of TNMIC. It is extremely potent. Next antibacterial spectrum. They are broad spectrum antibiotic active against the gram positive organisms like streptococci, staphylococci, enterococci, listeria and clostridium difficile which is an anaerobe and also on the gram negative organisms like Enterobacteriaceae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Bacteroides fragilis which is an anaerobe. It is resistant to most beta lactamases. It resists hydrolysis by most beta lactamases but not the metallo beta lactamases. When given IV, imipenem via the glomerular filtration in the renal tubules with the help of enzyme dihydropeptidase, it is rapidly hydrolyzed and excreted into the kidney. The dihydropeptidase enzyme is present in the brush border of the renal tubules. So, we give silastatin which inhibits this enzyme and increases the imipenem concentration in the body. Silastatin is Reversible dihydropeptidase inhibitor. Imipenem plus silastatin is the combination which increases the antibacterial efficacy. Pharmacokinetics. THF is 1 hour. It is eliminated by the kidney. Side effects. Diarrhea, vomiting, skin rashes, hypersensitivity reaction and seizures only at the high doses and also in predisposed patients. Use. Hospital acquired respiratory, urinary, abdominal, pelvic and skin and soft tissue infections. Imipenem plus silastatin is given 0.5 gram IV 6 hourly. In Pseudomonas aeruginosa infection, imipenem plus silastatin with gentamicin is given. Next, uh, here I have drawn a table which differentiates the meropenem, doripenem and artapenem. They are the drugs. Artapenem is the new one. They all are not hydrolyzed by renal peptidase and hence co-administration with the silastatin is not needed. Now meropenem. It is more potent on the gram-negative aerobes. It is reserved drug for the treatment of serious nosocomial infection caused by cephalosporine resistant bacteria. Pseudomonas originosa infection, meropenem and aminoglycosides is preferred. It is less likely to cause the seizures. For nosocomial infection like septicemia, febrile neutropenia, pelvic and intraabdominal infection, meropenem is given. Next, doripenem. It is more active against some resistant pseudomonas. Indications same as meropenem. Side effects, nausea, diarrhea, superinfection and phlebitis. It is also less likely to cause the seizures. Next, artapenem. It is more active against E. coli, H. influenza, K. pneumonia, Moraxella catarrhalis, Proteus and many anaerobes. Indications are resistant skin and skin structure infections, diabetic foot infections without osteomyelitis, cap and complicated UTI intraabdominal and pelvic infection, gynecological infection, and prophylaxis after the colorectal surgery. For ESPL producing organism, it is the drug of choice. The etapenem is the drug of choice for ESBL producing organism. It is longest acting, THF is 4 hour. Side effect, headache, confusion, thrombophlebitis, diarrhea, and less likely to cause seizures. Etapenem. The major mechanism of acquired resistance is one by the upregulation of antibiotic efflux mechanism and second by the selection of mutants with deficient pouring channels. It is less effective against the pseudomonas. ESBL 
what is ESBL? It is extended spectrum beta lactamases, which hydrolyzes third generation cephalosporin and monobactam. For this, the drug of choice is etapenem. Now, last one we will discuss about ferropenem. It is orally effective. Strep pneumonia, H influenza, and Moraxella catarrhalis they are highly susceptible to ferropenem. Use respiratory, ENT, and genitourinary tract infections. Side effect diarrhea, abdominal pain, nausea, and rashes. Thanks for watching my video. If you found it helpful, then please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.